Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to The Discriminating Gamer. You know, I recently learned that watching fish swim around in a tank can have a calming and a very pleasurable effect on the brain. It must be from all the indoor fins. Ladies and gentlemen, speaking of fish, today we're going to go ahead and take a look at Grease Lightning from WizKids. Lightning from Boys Kids, two to four players take on the roles of trireme captains in ancient Greece as they attempt to win the regatta and avoid the perils and pitfalls of the gods. Essentially, you create a bunch of wedges that make a circular race course with different tracks along them. Each player is going to go ahead and take a couple of ships. They're going to go ahead and take a wave token. They're going to go ahead and grab a navigation die and two movement die. Players are also going to take a player board and two fish tokens. Each player places one of their triremes and the wave token on the uh, starting wedge along a certain track. The other triremes go on the lap counter so they can see how many laps that particular ship has already done. Each player also gets a card from the favor deck. These are cards that are going to have some very peculiar powers given to you by the gods as you play the game. And the starting player will gain the golden fleece, the first player token. Players are going to roll their die simultaneously. First you roll your navigation die and that's kind of guaranteed movement. You're going to place that there. Then you're going to roll your first movement die. Then you can make a decision. Do I want to try to go further? Do I want to roll the second die? If you roll higher, equal to or higher than that first movement die, then you can go uh, the sum total of all your movement die. But if you roll lower than your first movement die, you bust and you don't get any of that movement. You only get your navigation movement. Now if you've drawn a wedge from the last turn, then you can place a wedge on this turn this time. Uh, you can't place it on the starting uh, tile and you can't place it on any tile with any ships on it, but you can place it anywhere else. These tiles can kind of move the, the uh, uh, different locations, the different tracks. You can steer your enemies into danger this way. So you're trying to screw over people in front of you that uh, maybe are, are getting too far ahead and you're also trying to maybe put one in front of you that will lead you to a better outcome. Next, you're going to go ahead and move your ship. You can go ahead up to the total number that you rolled. As you're moving, though, you're following the track. If you ever come to kind of a fork in the road, you can decide where you're going to go. Sometimes you'll have to roll a die to see which track you go on, but you may encounter obstacles along the way. If you encounter another ship on your track, you simply move over them and you don't count that space. Now, as I say, you may encounter some bonuses and obstacles as you go. If you land on a fish, you can grab a fish token. If you land on a lightning bolt, you may grab a favor of the gods card. If you land on a wedge, you may be able to grab a new wedge, and if you land on a plus three movement uh, spot, you can add three to your total uh, movement. However, you may run into a hydra, and if you run into the hydra and you can't spend any fish to appease it, you have to end your movement there. Now, you can only have a total of uh, three fish on your player board. You can also spend fish to do rerolls for your navigation die, but typically you're going to want to have them there in order to appease the hydra so that you can keep going on your way. So players go around and around. Each time they lap the starting uh, wedge, they go ahead, they move up on the, uh, on the lap uh, marker. So once a person has actually done all the laps and they've made a pass, that's the end of the round. All the players, other players, they can continue to finish their turn. And whoever has gotten the furthest past the starting zone and they've completed all the laps wins Grease Lightning. So Grease Lightning is a very, very, very light game. Um, and it's, it's, it's not a bad game for what it is. It's, you know, a fun racing game. My, one of my issues, though, is um, it, it's, it's obviously it's very luck driven. It's very much about those die. And there is the push your luck element there, which is nice. But, I mean, still fundamentally, it is a very random game. 
Now there's some mitigation there. You can place those tiles to kind of help you and screw over people ahead of you, but not that much. And I kind of, if, I, if anything, I wish there was ways you could use those tiles to, I don't know, maybe turn people around and then they'd have to turn around. Or I, I wish there was something because you could only move in the one direction. But as it was, it just felt like it, it, it wasn't as, um, there wasn't a, a, enough you could do to mitigate things. Now you do also have the, Favor cards, but again, drawing them is kind of random. And, and there's some fun stuff, and there's some fun take that in it. And it's an enjoyable light game, and it's not a very long game either, so so that's nice. On the whole, I feel like this is a much better game for maybe younger players or people new to the hobby. But, you know, for experienced gamers, I, I, I think it may fall flat. I don't know that there's enough here for you. So recommendation for the discriminating gamer is try it before you buy it. Again, if you're younger, new to the hobby, I think you might get a kick out of it. Thank you once again for joining us today on The Discriminating Gamer. As always, we ask you to please leave a comment for us on YouTube, on BoardGameGeek, on our Facebook page, or on thediscriminatinggamer.com. We'd ask you to please like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter. I'd ask you to please give us a thumb on BoardGameGeek to this video. That helps us out a lot. And I'd also ask you to check out my other channel on YouTube. That is Cody Carlson PhD, where we talk about military history and fun things like that. Please subscribe to that one as well. Uh, you know, speaking of the ancient Greeks, I believe it was the Phoenicians actually gave the Greeks their alphabet. And, you know, speaking of alphabet, I, uh, I only learned 25 letters. I don't know why. Please somebody help me on my feet again. And I don't know where I'm going and I don't know where I've been. Please somebody help me on the solid ground. It's a long time and I'll be dying. Once a year I wind up in the band. So I know where this can go. It's a valid question. I'm tall and hard with my dark.